Science 3, Quarter 2, Week 6 How Living Things Depend on the Environment to Meet Their Basic Needs This is our lesson for today. Are you ready to learn? Learning Competency with Code Explained how living things depend on the environment to meet their basic needs. I want you to look at your surroundings. Everything you see and feel is part of your environment. An environment includes living things such as plants, animals, people, and the tiniest microbes. Some examples include beach environments, desert environments, forest environments, and arctic environments. Every living thing has basic needs differently, depending on the environment. Remember, organisms can only survive in environment where their basic needs are met. For example, a shark. A shark gets its food, air, water, and shelter from the ocean. Its gills pull the air it needs out of the ocean water. So this is an example of a shark wherein it lives in a beach environment. Another example is a polar bear. A polar bear cannot survive in the desert. Its body is not adapted to live in the heat because polar bear eats fish ring seal that can be found in water or cold area. So the environment that is suitable for polar bears is Arctic environment. Next, we have a cactus plant. We all know that a cactus plant was able to adapt the extreme heat and dryness of the desert. It stores water and moisture. Cactus store water in their roots, stem, and leaves. That is why it is suitable to live in a desert environment. We also have an orangutan. An orangutan makes nests of trees to sleep in at night and rest during day. They get their food from the trees using their arms and legs to climb on. It also serves as their habitat. Wild and some endangered animals can be found in the forest, so they can survive or live in a forest environment. Interactions among organisms and their environments can be very complex because an organism gets everything it needs to survive from the biotic and abiotic parts of its environment. Let's define these two. What do we mean by biotic and what is an abiotic? What do we mean by biotic? The biotic factors in environment refers to all living things. Examples of these are plants, animals, bacteria, fungus, and proteins. When we say proteins, these are eukaryotic, which means they have a nucleus. They can be parasites and they all prefer aquatic or moist environments. There are three classifications of protists. 
Some are animal-like proteins, which are heterotrophs and have the ability to move. Others are plant-like proteins, which are autotrophs that photosynthesize. Fungi-like proteins, on the other hand, are heterotrophs and they have cells with cell walls and reproduce by forming spores. Examples of proteins are kelps. How about abiotic? The abiotic factors refers to all non-living things like physical conditions, temperature, sunlight, humidity, different gases, and minerals present in the air. Examples of abiotic are soil, air, minerals, light, and water. When we say ecology, it is the study of interactions that take place between organisms and their environment, as shown in the picture on the left side. Living organisms have basic needs. Every organism has its own way of making sure that its basic needs are met. We call this interdependence. That every living organism within an environment has a specific role or job. That some living things cannot make their own food must eat other organisms to survive. Food chain is one of the best example of interdependence that continues flows of energy. So this is an example of food chain. In a food chain, we have the producers, consumers, and the composers. Producers, consumers, and the composers have important roles that contribute to the wellness of the environment. These roles create the cycle of resources shared by an environment's member while providing them with their basic needs. So this is an example of food chain. As you can see, we have the producer, which is the grass. And then we have the primary consumer, secondary consumer, tertiary consumer, and final consumer. At the end of the food chain, we have the decomposers. So as you can see, it is a cycle. What are the producers? Producers are organisms capable of making their food directly from non-living resources. Examples of producers are grasses or other plants. How about consumers? Consumers ingest other organisms to obtain the energy and nutrients they need to survive. As can be gleaned in our picture, the primary consumer is the grasshopper, the secondary consumer is the frog, and the tertiary consumer is the snake, and our final consumer is the hawk.
I live in the high of tree. Fruits and bugs can't hide from me who I am. Number five. I make food out in the sun. My toes are long, but I can't run. Who I am. Exercise 2. Match me. Match column A to column B where the living things live based on their basic needs. Number 1. Monkey. 2. Fish. 3. Cactus. 4. Cow. 5. Polar Bear. Exercise 3. Name me. Label each organism as producer, consumer, or decomposer. Write your answer on the space provided before the number. Number 1. Fungi. Number 2. Fox. 3. Lion. 4. Grass. 5. Mouse. Label each organism as producer, consumer, or decomposer.